Welcome everyone to this Let's Play of Kerbal Space Program 1.0.5. Now, in the previous episode, we had built this bus, uh, which is going to bring back our crew from Minmus. But during pre-flight checks, we noticed we had missed out on our Kerbal uh, operating system module, which I've added here at the top, and also the Kerbal engineering module, which I have also added in. So, without further ado, uh, let's get ourselves on out to uh, Minmus to rescue our heroes. Uh, so, uh, during this ascent, I thought we would take the opportunity to give a shout out to some of my subscribers who have been giving me some excellent tips on how to perform certain manoeuvres in KSP. And they are Mike Aben, John Nowak and Brent Geary. And it basically boils down to the fact that my rendezvous technique is a little overcautious. Now that does lead to very close rendezvous, but it's a little bit inefficient. Now a little bit later, we will be seeing some of their tips in action. So let's rejoin this taxi, this bus, when it arrives at Minmus. Well, we have just crossed over into the sphere of influence of Minmus. Uh, and if we uh, scroll right in here in map view, we can see Minmus Station 1, which is our initial rendezvous, our initial stop on this bus route. Uh, and we haven't made uh, a too great an approach. We're still uh, 189 kilometers uh, out from Minmus. We need to be in at about 98, 99 kilometers. So let's just get ourselves uh, a maneuver node. There we go. Just try and get a maneuver node somewhere onto this line here. There we go. Add a maneuver. Uh, and we're going to have to pull on our um, radial handle here and just pull ourselves in to give us a lower periapsis. So there we go. So what are we now? We're now 133. So let's see. We can just pull on this and keep it going across. Uh, and that gives us 109. Uh, so we can now use precise node just to bring us down a little bit further. So let's just click there, uh, adding a 0.1 to our radial delta V. So that's 101 to so just bring us in a little bit close. 101 still. Uh, there we go, 98. Now we're a little bit high, uh, so let's bring down uh, by, again, using precise node uh, to bring down on our normal axis. And that's looking pretty good. Uh, there we go, we're now at 99. That is excellent. I think that will do just nicely. Uh, that's an 11.3 meter per second uh, burn. Uh, so what I'm going to do, because that's such a tiny burn, I'm just going to thrust limit our engine right down. Uh, and that will mean it'll be a little bit easier for uh, KOS to execute this maneuver. So let's just scroll around. pre-align, get ready onto that blue maneuver node marker and just run that node, uh, which is due in 17 minutes. So let's just go back into uh, map view and warp to handle. So let's just do that. Uh, that'll bring us uh, within three minutes of our maneuver. So three minutes, 20, 10. You can see warp time coming down there at the top until we are about, there we go, three minutes from our maneuver. So we are pretty close to our maneuver point already. Uh, we are going to be locking onto that alignment at the one minute and three second mark. So let's just warp forward to that. So there we are, two minutes 30. Two minutes. One minute 30. And then bring time warp down as we go to 1 minute 9. So 
So KOS, uh, my maneuver node script, will now lock on to that maneuver node. Uh, and that will then execute at T minus three. So again, we can use time warp just to move ourselves forward. So down to uh, 30, 20, 10, and just bring down time warp. So there's our manoeuvre being slowly dribbled out, about halfway through now. And there we go, absolutely on the dot, no remaining delta V whatsoever. So that gives us, there we go, 99 uh, kilometres uh, periapsis, so that's absolutely excellent. Uh, so next, I think we need to prepare for our uh, capture burn. So let's just come back out of map mode uh, and uh, put back our thrust limiter because we're going to need uh, a fair bit of thrust to do uh, this next manoeuvre back in uh, map mode. So let's add ourselves a manoeuvre. Uh, we can add it anywhere because what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the precise node periapsis button to bring our maneuver right onto the periapsis. And then we're going to pull back on our retrograde handle. And you can just see the orange dotted line there curving in. Now we're gonna try and get as best uh, a... rendezvous as possible. So let's just pull back gently on our retrograde handle and see if we can get these two marks. Just went a little bit too far. So we'll pull on our prograde handle. And then now we've got such a tiny amount to go, uh, we will use precise node just to see if we can bring these two together. Looks like even precise node is gonna have a bit of trouble. Now we are a little bit we are a little bit, uh, oh, maybe we're not. Maybe we're not. Which way are we? We're just a smidgen ahead. And then if we go a smidgen back, I think that's probably the best we're gonna do using the buttons. If we wanted to, we can actually change uh, the figures. So I can put sort of 0.9 in here. Uh, that seems to be too much. So I can put 0.8 and then maybe 0.4. Uh, add a five, maybe three. Oh, I think it's getting. Uh, <laughs> I think it's getting um, so so fine adjustment. I don't even think precise node is going to be able to get us much closer than we are already. So I think I'm going to execute this maneuver node. Uh, and then make a final adjustment out at the DN, which you can see way out here uh, on the other side of our orbit. So let's just bring up our maneuver node execution script. Uh, there we go. So let me just swing around uh, and pre-align to our maneuver node marker. That's the blue marker there on the nav ball. There we go. Now we've got two hours to go until this particular maneuver. Now, one of the suggestions that was given to me by uh, my subscriber, uh, my subscribers was, uh, if you're having problems at warping to a particular location and warping to the periapsis or one of these handles, these can get uh, a little bit confused when they're one over the top of each other. Why not just use Kerbal Alarm Clock itself because that's all clicking on these handles actually does it adds a warp to uh, Kerbal alarm clock alarm and that you can see all of these grayed out completed alarms uh, in Kerbal alarm clock which are exactly that warp to maneuver node or warp to sphere of influence so let's delete those that we have already used so there's quite a few of these built up over the previous episodes And you'll see we have a Duna window opening very, very, very soon. So it's vital we get our heroes home. But in the meantime, let's concentrate on adding a new alarm. We want to add a new maneuver node alarm. 
and we'd like to have a, well, let's say a two minute margin uh, between the alarm and actually hitting the manoeuvre node. Let's add that alarm. So you can see we now have a Minmus bus alarm in two hours, seven minutes and 10 seconds. All that remains now is to use time warp to our advantage. You can see time ticking away very rapidly down here at the bottom left. Uh, see if we can get our bus, there we go, there's our bus uh, approaching in there. And we can be carefree with the warp time because Kerbal Alarm Clock will take that into account as well. So I'm gonna go up to uh, time warp of a thousand, something I would never do uh, if I didn't have the benefit of these very handy mods. And you can see uh, time warp is being automatically reduced for us as we approach our manoeuvre notice. Now times 10 now, uh, times five, and now times one. And there we hit our alarm. Uh, we get an opportunity to review the alarm if we uh, don't wish to use it. Uh, we can close that uh, alert and delete it, so we will do that. And we are now 1 minute and 50 seconds away from our manoeuvre. Now we're already pre-aligned. Uh, the alignment is going to lock at 1 minute and 4 seconds, so we can just use a little bit of time warp to bring that down. So we're down to 1.30 now. Now 120, 110 bring down the time warp and get ready to execute. So there's the lock on, which has taken place. Now we can warp forward to T minus four seconds and execute the actual burn itself. So there we go, ready at T minus four. Engines kick in. Halfway through the burn. Now we had uh, one, one, one and a bit, where are we? 1.3 meters per second of delta V left. So I think we are going to have to make an adjustment. Uh, we can either make the adjustment here at the apoapsis or at the uh, descending node. Uh, we're gonna be quite a long way out from Minmus in either case. Uh, so I think I'm going to stick it, uh, <laughs> I'll tell you what, let's stick it right in the middle. Let's stick it right in the middle because it's going to be a tiny adjustment, absolutely minuscule adjustment. Uh, so let's see, where are we? Targeted intersection, uh, separation will be 21. Uh, so let's just get hold of our retrograde marker. Oh, tiny, tiny bit too far. Here we go, pull on, oops, going out way too far. Uh, way too far, so let's bring this around a little. Pull back. And, oh, that's the wrong way. We will go this way. And then swing our, there we go, 1.5 kilometers. 6.3, so let's pull it back. Now 1.8, I don't think we're probably 2, 14. I don't think we're gonna be able to get any closer than that. 2.9. No, I think we've, uh, I think we've missed it. 1.7, that's not bad. 1 1.7, 2.1, 1.9, 7, <laughs> going the wrong way. 1.5, that's pretty good. 1.5 is pretty good, so that's going to be uh, our, uh, that's gonna be our target rendezvous, this little orange, pair of markers here uh, and that's going to be we can close uh, Kerbal alarm clock now uh, so that's going to be a well it's, it's trivial almost it's almost trivial in fact it's so trivial I'm not even going to use our KOS script to complete it what I'm going to do is I'm going to use uh, a little trick 
uh, which is to use your maneuver node just to get yourself on target. Uh, so there we go. So it's so tiny. Our target vector is about here. Uh, and then I'm going to warp all the way around to our maneuver node. And then I'm going to use RCS just to burn off this tiny, tiny amount of uh, Delta V. It's only 0.2. It doesn't even fill uh, the entire uh, Delta V bar. Uh, and this is, again, another little uh, tip uh, when you're doing these sorts of manoeuvres, which uh, I think was given to me by Mike Aben, which is to use the map view and actually watch your closest approach markers and actually do your manoeuvring on your approach from map view. Uh, that way you can actually watch what your actual um, position is relative to your target. And in order to do that, you have to do one very risky thing. You have to delete your maneuver. Now, you want to stay locked on target. In this case, get our RCS in place and just puff away with the RCS. And you can see it's such a tiny amount it's almost impossible to puff out just 0.2 meters per second. But we've managed it. Uh, we have an approach now of 900 meters. And this is another opportunity for us to use Kerbal Alarm Clock. In this case, we're going to add an alarm and we're gonna use alarm for closest approach to target. Uh, again, uh, we can specify how much of a margin we want for our closest approach. Now we've been using uh, three minutes uh, for most of our maneuvers and I think three minutes to closest approach is probably uh, a good idea. Uh, give us time to maneuver, give us time to position ourselves uh, and give ourselves time not to crash into our target. So let's add that alarm. Uh, you can see the symbol is now a little bit different. It's a little uh, purple uh, target marker there that you can see uh, here as well. So the, all that remains now is to time warp to three minutes to go. Now that is apparently five hours away. Uh, we can use our time warp uh, with abandon uh, so uh, we won't have any problems uh, missing that point. But trying to guess where that would be and put a warp to handle down here or warp to manoeuvre down here uh, would actually be quite tricky. Uh, so uh, we're not going to do that. We are going to let Kerbal Alarm Clock do its thing. So there we go. It's bringing down the time warp. We are now time warp back to 10. Uh, we are now going to drop down time warp to 5. And there we go. We are at our uh, three minutes to closest approach. Uh, again, uh, we can double check our closest approach. It's still 0.9. Now, um, again, uh, in this case, it was Brent Geary who pointed out, don't bother herding if you don't have to. Uh, we are going to be 900 metres away from our target. So... Um, don't start herding when you're 100 kilometers away from your target. Uh, it's just not necessary. It's just wasteful. Uh, so uh, that was one of the tips he gave me. And thank you very much for doing so, because we are a little bit short of fuel uh, in this particular <laughs> in this particular case. So um, it's probably just as well we don't waste any. Now we are getting uh, pretty close, so it is probably, uh, there we go, four kilometers away. It probably is time now to start herding our markers. Now again, we are in uh, map view because we can keep a check on our approach. So we are now just a hundred kilometers away, a uh, hundred kilometers, a hundred meters away. Uh, so uh, yes, do your herding uh, from within map view in order to keep a close eye on how your uh, two target markers are doing. Now, 100 metres is plenty close enough. So uh, there we go. We are three kilometres, uh, just over three kilometres away from Minma Station. Uh, so uh, those tips that we've been given have helped tremendously. So thank you very, very much. Uh, all that remains now is to uh, stay on target. 
so uh, we have a target relative speed of 20 meters per second. We are going straight towards Minma Station. Uh, so all it remains is to close on our target. So we will use a little bit of time warp. Just keep an eye on our retrograde marker and our target retrograde marker. Both of them are well lined up. So we are going directly towards our, uh, our objective. Two kilometers, 1.9 kilometers. 20 meters per second. We can easily uh, break uh, on our approach. There's no need to rush to slow down at this point. Uh, we've crossed over into meters from our target, 900 meters to go. 800, 700, 600, 500, and I think it's about time we started to slow down. So let's just hit the gas. There we go. We are approaching our target now at five meters per second. We're going to be docking at this bottom docking port because we have the USI inflatable docking port here at the base. So 130. Five meters per second approach speed. Four meters per second. And three. So we're down to 2.2 meters per second. So I think it's about time we made tracks towards that lower docking port. So we're going down a little bit now and just a little bit away from our station. So let's get turned around. We're 70, there we go, 70 meters away. Sixty-eight. So I think it's probably about time uh, we can get ourselves ready to align. It's already chosen the UKS Kerbetrail docking port, which is the one here highlighted. Let's just make sure we are controlling from our docking port. And we'll just wait for these target lines to go green so that we know we are on the right side of the port. I'm going to deactivate this engine uh, just to make sure we don't have any accidents and then just use the H key just to kill off our vertical speed. So if we look down here, our vertical speed, there we go, uh, is now zero. So it's now just a case of aligning our two docking ports, which is this main orange marker here. So there we go. Uh, we can now rotate and what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to rotate to 90 degrees so we've got our tiny solar panels at uh, right angles to the rest of the ship and then it's just a matter of translating across so let's get ourselves get our yellow marker into the right quadrant which is this quadrant here and just bring ourselves across. So we're bringing in this line first. Doesn't really matter. And just keep it trapped between the green line and the white line. Bring up the reticule as the other green line approaches. See, we're just about five meters away now. And I think it's about time we got a little H going. So that's uh, 0.15 meters per second, 0.18. And magnetism should be taking over any time soon. There you go, I think it's taken over now. And we should hear that happy thump. 
There we go. So we have docked the bus uh, to Minmus Station 1. We are all ready to bring some of our heroes home. But in the next episode, we are going to rescue Bill and Jeb from the surface of Minmus, get everyone aboard the bus, and bring our heroes home. So with that said, I'd like to thank you for watching. I'd like to thank my subscribers for their hints and tips. And I look forward to seeing you in the next episode. So if you liked the episode, please hit that like button and we'll see you again soon. Take care. Bye bye.